Hello. We are gonna take it a little casual today. Um, all right, if you can hear me, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I've got my computer pulled up here for my notes. Um, so I'm gonna make sure I don't miss anything. But if you can hear me and you're watching live, or even if you're watching the replay, say hi. Put hashtag replay. Um, did a quick blow dry on my hair this morning. It's a little, a little crazy. I just wrapped up um, really wonderful. Hi, Heidi. <laughs> A uh, really wonderful coaching call with one of my chief executive trainer students um, who's actually going on vacation this week, um, but she's making some good headway and getting a clear understanding of um, what's happening and what she needs to do differently or um, what she needs to understand in order to really start seeing some traction. Um, some more traction, I should say. So, awesome. All right, so today we're going to talk about why amazing trainers get stuck at 5K months. And um, this is a number we see really often in a lot of our applicants. Um, and it's because, you know, things are for the most part going well, but there's just starting to hit a, a, a wall and <laughs> you can't get past. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, Let's see. Let me get my notes up so I don't get distracted. Um, so if you're watching live, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, I actually had to close the blinds. It's super bright outside. It is um, snowy, so there's snow on the ground and sunny, so it's really reflecting. Um, and I have sensitive eyes. I don't know if this happens to you guys, but when it gets too bright, the bright light will actually trigger me to sneeze. And apparently this happens to like a small portion of the population and it's, it's, it's really strange. So I'll be like walking out of a grocery store and <laughs> the sun will hit me and I'll start sneezing. Um, my family likes to make fun of me for that, but uh, let me know if that happens to you or if you've heard of that happening. All right, so looks like we've got a few of you guys on. Then we say hi. Um, let me know where you're watching from in the comments. I think there's a bit of a delay, uh, which is why I've got my computer here because I'm not seeing the comments on my phone. <clears throat> but I see some of you guys are from Maryland. You're in your car. I hope you're driving safely. Um, hi, Kaylee. It's currently dumping snow in northern Montana. Well, this sounds really pretty, but probably a hassle to deal with. Um, I love Montana. I can't wait to go back one day. Um, I went there when I was seven weeks pregnant. And if anybody knows like that first trimester of your pregnancy, you're very tired. And I ended up skipping out on all the hikes because I was just so exhausted. It was taking so much for my body to create a human. <laughs> um, so I missed out on a lot of hiking, but the scenery was beautiful. Um, I just know it. I remember it was basically an hour's drive between towns, which is hilarious. Um, but you know, things were so far away. Uh, Cause growing up in Texas, I was, I was used to cities being far away, but not that far. <laughs> so welcome, welcome. Um, okay, some housekeeping stuff I wanna make sure I go into before we get started. Um, first of all, welcome to the group. If this is your first live, um, it's so nice to meet you and, and welcome to the group. Um, we take great care in making sure that this group is a really safe, welcoming space. Um, we keep conversations to business related topics to avoid any hot topics um, or explosive topics in the industry. And um, yeah, I've been running groups for over 10 years, so I know I know the ins and outs of it, so we, we do our best to keep it safe, so make sure you follow the guidelines uh, in the group. If you haven't yet, um, this past fall, I um, put all of my brain cells together and created a book um, called The Modern Dog Trainer's Guide to 10K Months, and so if you haven't grabbed that yet, I highly suggest that you do and that you, you make sure you do sit down and read through it because it really... Um, 
kind of puts all of those puzzle pieces together, right? Of all of the things that I talk about in this group, um, on the blog, um, on the lives, on the podcast, it really brings everything together into a cohesive plan, strategy, um, explanation of what we do here in this work so that you can really get your mind around um, kind of a different way of thinking about your dog training business. So I strongly suggest that you go and grab that book. It's at themoderndogtrainer.net slash book. Um, and then also, if you're interested in speaking to us, in speaking to um, one of my amazing team members, Ty, she has, she's our business strategist, and she's spoken to, I think, over 200 dog trainers in the last 12 months about their businesses. And so she's really incredible at helping you pinpoint exactly what's going on in your business because when you're in the weeds of it it's really hard to see what's happening um but we offer a complimentary game game plan call so that you can really um just sit down and talk through what's happening with somebody else that is very familiar with dog training businesses um and see you know where those gaps where those opportunities are for you in the next few months uh, to grow your business to the next level so if you haven't done that yet um i'll be posting the link at the end of this call and um, feel free to book one of those with her. She's really, really sweet. So let's talk about where you are now. Somebody that's making 5K a month in your business. Um, you are working with a few clients a week. You are dog training full time now. That's really enough to uh, essentially go out on your own. Um, you don't, you maybe don't have a job to fall back on. <laughs> Probably don't. Um, because this is now your full-time gig, right? You're no longer uh, juggling those two different things at the same time. You are also um, making anywhere from four to 6,000 a month. And you've been training a lot longer than you've been running your business. Uh, so you've been training for a long time. You are a wonderful trainer. You've got qualifications. You've gone to potentially a school or you've mentored under a lot of uh, maybe one person or a couple different people over the years. Um, and so you really have proven yourself to be a really great trainer, but the business is now starting to put pressure on your passion, right? And it's putting stress over um, your life that you don't want to. <laughs> and um, it's starting to uh, put some cracks into your foundations of running a successful business. So um, I want to start out by saying that 5K a month is a really great accomplishment it's um a really solid number it means you know you're helping people on a regular basis um but it's just not quite what it used to be right like 10 years ago 5k a month was wonderful <laughs> but now with inflation with um you know the cost of everything going up uh it's just no longer quite enough to be comfy cozy and so you know let's see it makes sense to start looking at a bigger number to bring in, but that also is very much, um, might not seem possible the way you're doing things right now. So let's talk a little bit about why you might not want to grow to 10 K at this point in your business. Um, maybe you are still pricing yourself hourly. And so that means, you know, logically you think you're going to have to work twice as hard or twice as much in order to make, 10k you know if you're currently making 5k um that means you would have to spend less time with your dogs your own dogs and your family it means you might be driving even more all over the place <laughs> to make that number happen um and yeah you would be burned out and exhausted right the way you're doing things it's just not going to be um feasible sustainable in order to get to that number um so yeah if you're at 5k months and you are still pressing yourself hourly, um, it very much does seem like an impossible goal or something that's just not going to be feasible for the long run. So yeah, that would cause burnout. <laughs> um, but let's talk about why you might want to get 10k months and figure out maybe an alternative system, an alternative structure that could help you. Um, hi guys. It's so good to see some of my students watching. Um, let me hit refresh here. Oh, Facebook is so glitchy. Let me know where you're watching from. If you're just jumping on, I would love to know. 
Um, okay, so let's talk about why you would want to get to 10k months. Um, let's say that you're able to work some magic and you want to um, reach for that next level goal for yourself, right? And, and what that 10k a month number really would mean for you rather than just a number. Because I really see money as just a tool to live the life in the way you want to live it, right? Um, money inherently is not good or bad. It really comes down to who you are and how you're going to use it in your life. And so getting to 10K months really requires a shift in perspective, right? An evolution away from thinking of your value, your services or your offers being priced by the hour to really leveling up to of you know how you're positioning yourself, um, how you're positioning your services and your business to your clients. So yeah, at first it made sense to reach for those 5K months. Um, and, and maybe that's a safe number for you, right? Like 5K a month is essentially 60K a year. That's probably what a lot of us uh, growing up, you know, had parents earning about 60K a year. Um, so it feels like a really comfortable number, but times have evolved, right? Like things don't cost uh, the same as what they used to. It's much more expensive, everything from, um, you know, healthcare to <laughs> just groceries uh, with inflation have gone up like crazy. So um, it's really no longer a, a sustainable number to reach for. And we really want to start reaching for bigger numbers than that. Hi guys. So good to see you guys jumping on. Um, we're being a little bit more casual today because it's just been a long day. Oh, let's see. So, and also at 5k a month, you absolutely have to really keep watching your spending, right? You have to still budget very closely. Um, if you want to try to save for retirement or have an emergency fund, um, you have to live off of less than that, right? So um, while 5k a month used to be a really good number to aim for, it really is kind of the bare minimum that you wanna aim for. And really in order to get some breathing room in your budget, um, be able to do things that you like to do, like go out to restaurants um, with your friends or go on trips or I don't know, just buy a new car. Um, it really does start to become a nece necessity to start looking at a higher number than that, right? Um, Cause things just, they're just adding up so much these days. <laughs> um, I had a, I just had a student who may or may not still be watching, but she told us um, yesterday that she is officially moving forward with building a new dog training space on her property. So um, she can offer more effective board and train programs. Hi, Anique. <laughs> and um, not only that, but she's not trying to build it herself. She actually has the means, the resources, the funds to actually pay outside contractors to come in and build that space for her, which is really incredible. So congratulations, you know who you are. Um, and so it's, it's really, if you have any big projects like that, a new home you wanna have, move into, or you know, a new space you wanna move into, uh, it's just not gonna be feasible anymore at just 5K a month, right? You're going to need to make more in order to have that breathing room in your budget for, uh, you know, bigger dreams, bigger projects. Uh, all right. So let's talk about what's happening. Like, why are you stuck at 5K a month? You're working with a few clients a week. Um, you've proven yourself. You've got the skill set as a trainer to, um, you know, deliver great experiences, uh, help a lot of people with their dogs. But things are just not continuing to grow you're you're up against the wall maybe you're driving a lot and you're starting to get burnt out from driving and um you know now it's time to think about what needs to shift and change in order for you to get to that next level of like in this case just for example we use 10k a month so one of the first things i see or more most i mean without a doubt the most common thing i see is very sporadic new client inquiries, right? And this happens for one primary reason, actually two. Um, and the first one being is you're not visible enough, 
So people are not seeing you enough or not hearing from you enough in order to either think of you when they're ready to move forward with training or think of you when, you know, their neighbor's talking about hiring a trainer and they don't know your name enough to, to recommend you. Um, or you're just not, you know, coming in, up in searches or in conversations online. Um, and so that's the very first thing is very inconsistent visibility with uh, your potential clients, right? Um, so that leads to sporadic new client inquiries because your name just doesn't come up all the time. And then the other part is that when you do get an influx, and this is like a really just vicious cycle that happens with a lot of businesses, not just dog trainers, but very much so with dog trainers because <laughs> you get very busy very quickly sometimes, um, is when you get an influx of new clients, then you stop marketing, right? You stop being visible. You kind of like go dark on the internet because you're so busy working with the clients that you just got, right? Well, maybe you got like five new clients all of a sudden. Um, so you're, you're just busy taking care of them, making sure they're getting great results, which is wonderful. But this leads to a slowdown because your marketing has stopped. You've gone dark. Things are not um, continuing to happen, even though you're working with clients. And so your marketing's not consistent. Uh, people are not seeing your name on a regular basis because you're busy, right? <laughs> That's normal. Um, but then that leads to a lull in your business, right? So you finish working with that group of clients that just came in and now it's crickets because there's been no marketing happening. There's been no consistent visibility. People are not seeing your name on a regular basis or hearing from you in, your, in their inboxes on a regular basis. And so that's when things go quiet. So then you dive right back into marketing <laughs> and you start posting things online again and you start sending out emails again and then you get full, right? You get booked up. And so that pattern of like, you know, super busy to like a lull is very, very common in trainers and, and training businesses because, um, you know, it's often a one person show. So you only have so many hours in the day. Um, but that is really a, a critical piece that I see happening. Um, that will hold you back from getting to those 10K months, right? That's, that's one piece of the puzzle that needs to be kind of put back together in order to get to 10K months. So make sure you are visible, make sure you are um, consistent, and um, you will avoid a lot of the seasonality that you see trainers talking about online. Um, you have to be consistent or you will get uh, a lull in your business. You want to make sure you're keeping up the momentum or your inquiries and the income as a result will drop off. Okay. Now, um, do, 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 do. I think I'm missing a piece in here. I was going to add in. Um, so another piece of the puzzle is on um, pricing. Right. We talked a little bit about that before when you're valuing your work on an hourly basis saying, you know, I will work with you for this amount of hours at this price. Um, it kind of devalues your expertise, right? Because it's it takes a focus off of the transformation that you're able to give clients, right? Like the, the result that you're able to give clients um, and actually just puts you in a box. And then it's a box that can be compared to a bunch of other people, <laughs> a bunch of other trainers, right? Um, and so it just doesn't make sense. On top of that, something I've mentioned before is that, you know, let's say you have two trainers, you've got one that's just starting out and one that's been in the industry for 25 years, right? So two different levels of um, experience and I'm not saying one is better than the other, but maybe one takes less time to get to that transformation the client wants than the less experienced one. And if they're both charging $100 an hour, then it doesn't make sense, right? Because it's going to take less hours to reach that transformation than it would um, for the experienced trainer than it would for the less experienced trainer. And the less experienced trainer is going to end up making more money um, when really the less time it takes for your, your clients to see results, 
the more valuable that is, right? That's like less work on their end, that's um, more efficiency, and people pay, wanna pay for convenience. They want things done as quickly, as effectively, efficiently as possible. So the hourly pricing model for dog training specifically just no longer works, and I know that that's just the way things have always been done, right? That's what our mentors did. Um, that's how, you know, a lot of trainers get started out. I. I don't know if you guys know this, but I started out training and when I was training, um, you know, charge hourly. And I think my price point was either 40 or $45 an hour, which is just nothing, right? Like so much more goes into working with the client than that one hour you're spending with them. So you have to start thinking about, you know, what all goes into working with the client and um, what kind of transformation somebody is looking to experience with their dog and what kind of amazing like quality impact that's going to have on their life and it comes out to being much more valuable than an hourly pricing model so um that's one of the reasons a lot of my students see that huge leap is because we move them away from that right you go from charging a hundred dollars an hour maybe even 150 dollars an hour or um you know 300 dollars a group class you know let's say if you have a, at the high point um, when really we take away that model and we put in something different that's going to price, help you price yourself based off of the value you're actually giving rather than the minutes that you're spending with somebody. Because somebody's not, the clients are not paying for you to come and hang out with them, right? They're paying for a certain result, a certain transformation, even if it's just a shift in their perspective and how they see their dog. So, um, you know, we're not pet sitters. <laughs> We're not dog walkers. Um, we are actually providing a transformation that is visible in um, their home, in their lives, in their relationships, in their finances, right? Even um, if you think of a dog that is uh, destroying somebody's furniture or something, you're saving them money by working with you, by them working with you. So, um, and then on top of that, one of the things I like to kind of look at is really looking at how to, you know, explain that transformation that's happening. And when somebody hires a trainer, what is it that they're actually hiring, right? They're not hiring somebody to come in and just like teach them how to teach their dog sit and stay and that kind of stuff. Um, they're paying for something that's going to happen or change in their lives as a result of their dog knowing these things. So it's kind of like if somebody goes to a cooking class to learn how to be a better cook. Yes, they want to cook better food, right? <laughs> they want to eat better food, but it's likely that they potentially want to be cooking better for somebody, right? They want to improve um, their relationship with people. They want to have people want to come to the table and eat their food together. They're paying for not just how to cook, right? Not just those like how-to skills, but ultimately they're taking the class because they're motivated beyond just being a better cook, right? Maybe they want their family to come to dinner every night together and hang out and talk to each other. Um, and right now their cooking just does not inspire that. <laughs> um, so think about what it is that people are looking for when they're hiring a trainer. And it's really not just like a dog that can sit and stay, right? What happens as a result of that behavior being um, changed. So it's much more valuable than hourly pricing, which is just the way things have always been done. I don't fault anybody for using that method, but um, it just is not a sustainable or profitable approach to building a business that's really going to support the lifestyle that you want to live and give you the time and the resources that you want in order to be a great trainer, in order to continue, you know, your continuing education and have time for that or go to a new school um, and, you know, have that time and money in order to pay for those things, right? And go through those things. Um, pricing hourly is just not the way to go about it. And so having that switch in just how you price yourself is going to help you get to 10K months. All right. One of the key pieces to being able to do that is really getting clear on who you want to work with, right? And what makes you a unique person to work with. So the last point I want to bring up in, you know, why you might be getting stuck here is 
trying to be everything to everybody. <laughs> you work with puppies, you work with adolescents, you work with senior dogs, you work with um, new dogs, resource guarding, reactivity. Uh, you work with families with old dogs and new kids, you know, so you do try and do everything for everybody. And so that means um, your brain might be happy, right? Because if you're like me, you like constantly creating new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I love creating new materials, but at the same time, that's not a sustainable business model, right? If you're constantly creating a bunch of new stuff for each new client you come, that comes into your doors, virtual doors or, you know, physical doors, then it's going to take a lot of your time to serve each client. And you're not able to really solidify your unique processes, your unique systems or approaches to training because you're constantly helping all kinds of different people, um, addressing all kinds of different problems. And so it's just not a sustainable business practice to try and help everybody um, with everything. On top of, it doesn't help you marketing, right? You don't, when you don't know who you want to speak to because you don't want to exclude anybody, um, then nobody in particular is really gonna resonate with your materials that you're putting out there in your marketing. So it can very much lead to, um, you know, if you're posting about puppies Monday, Tuesday you're posting about adolescence, Wednesday you're talking about reactivity, Thursday you're talking about senior dogs, you know, it gets, the message there gets very complicated and you know, not a single person is gonna look at all of that and say, wow, she really gets me, right? Um, because there's so many different variables in each of those things that nobody is really going to resonate with your whole message because they are not going to be all experiencing all of those things at the same time. So getting close, narrowed out into who your ideal client is um, gives you somebody to talk to, <laughs> gives you somebody to pinpoint, you know, what their problems are, um, what their uh, challenges are, what their goals are and also where they hang out, right? Where they can be found and where you need to be more visible uh, to grow your business. So those are really the biggest pieces um, that will hold you back um, and keep you at that 5K a month level. Let me see if there's anything I missed here. If you guys have any questions, I would love to know. Let's see if I can see comments. Um, let me know if you have any questions about any one of those pieces. I would love to know if there's anything there I can clarify. Um, and then in the meantime, I, I'm going to grab the link. Let's see. Um, so if you do want to speak with somebody on my team, um, Tylene, our business strategist, has some availability this week. She's just getting over the flu. Um, but she's opened up her calendar, so it's a really good time to speak with her about your business. It's just, I mean, any any time that you get a chance to do that, um, whether it's through us or through just a peer, it's always really helpful, right? It's enlightening to see how other people see your business, how, um, you know, what gaps you might be missing because you're you know, just too close to it, you're in the weeds. So you can apply for a game plan call with Kyleen here. Like I said, she's spoken to like 200 dog training businesses in the last 12 months. There's nothing she hasn't seen at this point. Do not be embarrassed. Um, she's extremely supportive, extremely sweet, and um, she really understands and, and wants to help um, every one of you create a business that's going to give you the resources and the time to be more of who you are, right? That's what it's about, is to have that ability to have some more um, breathing room in your budget so that you can give, you can volunteer, you can, um, you know, I, I actually just had a student share also that she was able to um, give a client a scholarship, right? Because she's making enough money that giving away lessons now is not a strain on her uh, financially or time-wise. Um, and so she's able to start giving back now that she's put her own oxygen mask on first. She's now able to give back to her community and help people that 
really wouldn't afford um, quality dog training um, before. All right, let's see. Awesome. All right, I guess we have no questions. Um, or the comments will just come in in five minutes uh, with the Facebook delay, but I won't hold you guys here any longer. I hope that was helpful. Let me know what your favorite takeaway was um, and let me know if there's any topics that you want me to cover in the future. I'm happy to talk about those um, as they come up and yeah, I will see you soon. Keep an eye on um, our materials. I've got a really um, powerful, helpful post email going out tomorrow. So definitely keep an eye out on that um, for some, some fresh ideas. All right. All right. We'll have to go get ready for my next coaching call. So if nobody has any questions, I'm going to go ahead and jump off. And um, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.